from a place we're not allowed to reveal. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. What is she doing? I never know what she's doing. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show brought to you in part by Knight Rider, the series, more muscle, bigger missions, heart-pounding action. Tonight at 8, 7 Central on NBC. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Talk about politically incorrect. We got a caller. Politically incorrect has never scared me. I'll tell you right now. We had a caller. She had all good intentions. She had all good intentions. I understood where her heart was at. But I know that what she said, if she tried to do what she proposed to do, she would be in trouble. People would say, what are you, a racist? But I know she, I know she's not a racist, and I know she doesn't intend to come off as a racist. In fact, quite the contrary, I think she's just excited and wants to see what people think. Here is what the caller suggested. You know, every time I see a black guy, like, just going to work or on an elevator, I want to ask him, hey, what do you think of Obama? You know, but is that racist or is that... You well, know, why, thinking, why would you ask, thing? Why? hey, you're black, what do you think of Barack Obama? <laughs> yeah, it's kind yeah of, that's what I want to ask. That's what you want to ask, all right? Well, she wants to ask that, but obviously I wouldn't recommend it, okay? When you're on the elevator, you don't look at somebody and go, hey, you're black. What do you think of Barack Obama? I just have to know. He's a black guy, you're black, what's the deal? And so, because she can't do it, well, you know, it doesn't mean I can't do it, okay? Because you guys understand where my heart is at. And by the way, I'm explaining to you where her heart is at. She's she's not a racist. I don't see why she would think that black people would have uh, a more particular or a more distinct impression of Barack Obama than anybody else. But okay. I'm going to ask the question on her behalf, and we're going to get the reaction from you. So this hour, you 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 are African American. Dean, you can start picking those up. You don't have to wait until twenty after because I I'm going to jump right into this. I know Dean's just going to sit there and let those ring. And this is this is what's called high concept. It's not going to be a big long monologue, Dean. You can start picking them up right now. And if they're not black, hang up on them because we're just going to talk to black folks here. Okay. So if you are African American, if uh, the black, call it what you will. Some people like African American, some people like black. And uh, it seems to be about 50-50 when I talk to people. But whatever you consider yourself, okay, you heard what the lady said. Let me play the call for you one more time, okay? This is what the caller, she, you know, she's excited about Barack Obama, and she'd love, if you're black, she'd love to run up to you. You know, every time I see a black guy, like, just going to work or on an elevator, I want to ask him, hey, what do you think of Obama? You know, but is that racist or is that... You well, know, why, thinking, why would you thing? ask? Why? Hey, you're black. What do you think of Barack Obama? <laughs> yeah, it's kind yeah of, that's what I want to ask. That's what you want to ask. All right, so we're doing it on her behalf. I would not recommend driving around, uh, you know, South Los Angeles and driving around Inglewood and saying, hey, excuse me. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. You're black. What do you think of Barack Obama? I just have to know. But, uh, you know, be, me being down here at the radio station, I can ask these questions. And so I will. This hour I will talk to you if you're black only. 
And you call me at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. And I'm going to ask the question just the way she would ask it. So don't be offended. I'm just going to ask it her way. And then you can give me the answer. All right? Let's start off here with Queen. Queen, you're on the Tom Like a Show. Hey, you're black. What do you think of Barack Obama? I love Barack Obama. I'm total, I'm totally in agreement with you, by the way. Love you, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I'm in total agreement with you. Um, he's very intelligent. I'm very, very happy that he is running for office. And I'm not just voting for him because he's black. Because when Jesse Jackson ran for office, I took it as a total joke. So it doesn't necessarily have to do with him being black. But me being black, I am happy that he is, you know, and um, that things are coming around and it's about time that, you know, we see different color faces running for office. But at the same time, I feel that whoever ends up in office is totally up to us, just people, to make changes that need to be made because, I mean, it's not up to um, presidents or politicians or anything to make changes for us. You know, I mean, for bills to be, you know, all that stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, now, I have to ask you this question. Do you have Caucasians coming up to you and acting like the caller? Uh, yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> I've had that before. It doesn't happen a lot because I'm not really a lot around uh, a lot of Caucasians like I used to be when I was in school. Yeah. But, um, yeah, sometimes. Now, what do you think? They look just like when the OJ case was going on. They constantly ask me, what did I think about OJ? I just want to slap somebody in the mouth when they would ask me that. It's the same way I feel when I'm watching, like, Jay Leno. Uh-huh. And Jay Leno will suddenly turn on to Kevin Eubank and say, eh, NBA Finals this week, Kev. <laughs> like, he does stuff like that all the time. It's like, well, why do you think he, maybe he's not a basketball fan? Come on. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and that, oh, that's we all know thing. why he did it. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Queen. Thank you, Tom. Can you take me out? Hmm, how do I want to go out? Uh, just take me out African tribal style. Yeah, I certainly can. Baninge, baninge. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. We're just doing what the caller said she would like to do. Let's take Roger here. Hey, Roger, you're black. What do you think of Barack Obama? What's up, Tom? Not much. That's right, man. Hey, man, I think Obama would be a good decision for the country. For the main fact that there's too many stupid ass on stuff in wrong. <laughs> yeah, I know you can say that. Go ahead. All right, cool. There's too many stupid ass politicians running the country and to have a black dude to show their ass up. Oh, man, that'll, that'll be a lock to stock of the whole world. And the people look different at uh, how black people really are. And give us at least a chance. <laughs> now, Roger, do you, have yes, ca- do you have Caucasian folks coming up to you and asking that question? Uh, no, sir. No, not yet. Because Queen said that she has had this experience where white people go up and say, Hey, what do you think about Barack Obama? <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't sound corny, man. That would, nah, I, know. I would laugh at him if they said something like that. I know. <laughs> You're laughing hey, now. <laughs> hey, man, I just want to say thanks for accepting my call, man. Can you take me out uh, original style whatever? Original style. Now, if you ask for extra crispy, we wouldn't have that. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's go to Erica. And as the caller said, hey, Erica, you're black. What do you think of Barack Obama? I think that Barack Obama is an extremely intelligent man. And I wish the rest of the world would just see him as a man and not a black man or a black candidate. Um, I do it just about anything to get the Republicans out of office at this point. And uh, George Bush's ignorant ass out of office, that'd be fantastic. But to answer that question, um, I have been asked that question, and uh, it's kind of funny for me. I have a little different situation because I'm adopted and my parents were white, and I'm biracial myself. So your previous caller that was wondering why, when you're biracial, you're referred to as black, it's because the government sees you as black. When you fill out that little ethnicity box, you can either you can't check two. You can only check one, so you're going to go with what you identify with. Uh huh. So that's that's just my opinion. That's absolutely right. How about people from the Dominican Republic, by the way? You know, they, uh-huh. are they Hispanic or are they black? What are they? I think they're black people that speak Spanish. Right, but you can't check both boxes, right? No, you can't, and that's 
That's the tough part. I know what you mean. That's the tough part. But I, I just wish, and I'm, I'm still hoping for the day where we don't have to look at people as black or white or Asian or whatever they may be. They can just be people. Because it, that's it, what he is. He's a very intelligent man. It has nothing to do with his color. Well, I happen to agree with you, but, uh, you know, I know human nature. And it's like Absolutely. that caller we had. That's the way people think. Absolutely. And I have a little bit of different perspective because I grew up in a white family, but never in a million years did my mother or father try to sway me one way or the other. They let me be me. So, you know, that's how it goes. Thank you, Erica. Thank you very much, Tom. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. We're talking only to black callers, and we're doing what the caller asked me to do. Actually, we did we did what she would like to do, but uh, she can't do it, so I'm doing it on her behalf. Let's go to Chris. Hey, Chris, you're black. What do you think of Barack Obama? I think Barack Obama is uh, going to change uh, the history of America, Tom. Um, I think what he's going to really do is he's going to put Al Sharpton and Jesse Jack out of business, because once he gets elected, nobody's going to be able to play that race card anymore. That's exactly right. You know, and I, I I think that more white people should would be apt to vote for him because I know there's a subculture of, of white people in America that just don't want to vote for him because they don't want to vote for a brother. But well, I'm here's the thing about the, the thing about Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson. You know, the, the comment you hear people make about them is who elected them black leaders? But you know, Barack Obama. If you ask who elected him a leader, then guess what? We all did. Exactly, exactly. Tom, if he I wins. never picked Al Sharpton or Jesse Jackson to lead me anywhere because you know. It, it takes a real man to lead people, and I'm a real man. I'm not going to follow no fool just into the abyss of 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 playing the race card time after time after time because all it's going to do is just alienate white people from you anyway. Yeah, good point. You know, so you know, I love your show, time. I love what you're doing. If you could, man, take me out with a bong toke, thank you, Jesus, and gangster style. Here you go, Chris. Thank you, Jesus! Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-TOM, 1-800-5800-866. I'm calling for all the ladies. You are a horrible man. You are a horrible man. It's the Tom Likas Show. Show at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. I got a phone call from a listener. Oh, her heart is in the right place, but this is what she would like to do. You know, every time I see a black guy like just going to work or on an elevator, I want to ask him, "Hey, what do you think of Obama?" You know, but is that racist or is that? You well, know, why, thinking, why would you ask it? Why? Hey, you're black. What do you think of Barack Obama? <laughs> yeah, it's kind yeah of, that's what I want to ask. That's what you want to ask. Yeah, but you can't do that. I can do it, though. And I'm doing it right now. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello to Brian. Brian, seems you're black. What do you think of Barack Obama? Yeah, I'm black, Tom. Uh, first time caller, first time, li I mean, long time listener, Tom. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> I'm black and I'm loving Obama. Tell us why. Why? Because I think we need somebody intelligent in the White House, uh, uh, Tom. Uh, after eight years of um, a guy uh, pushing crayons, I'm not tired of, uh, <laughs> I'm not tired of George Bush. <laughs> <laughs> you, me, and just about everybody. <laughs> oh, Tom, we can't take too much more of this. And, I know. Uh, that McCain and Phyllis, they look like uh, they just got out of school with Bush. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, Brian, let me ask you this. Do you have Caucasians coming up to you and asking you this question? Hey, Tom, every night I got a guy at work. And we argue every night. He wants to. He wants to vote for Ron Paul. He said he's going to write in a vote for Ron Paul. I said, Why you waste your vote? You might as well vote for yourself, because Ron Paul ain't going to get in there. And uh, if you want to write in a ballot, uh, put yourself on there. I might even listen to you instead of John McCain and uh, Palin. That Palin boy, she is dumb as a post. Oh man. 
Hey, I think she's been kissing them mooses out in the backyard. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Hey, Tom. Hey, great show. I've been listening to you for five years. Come on back to Dallas. We love you. I'll be back as soon as they bring me, Brian. We were just there. Thanks for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's go to Alenia. Hey, you're black. What do you think of Barack Obama? <laughs> I love Barack Obama. And it's not because he's black. It's because he's intelligent. And we want everybody to know that. I mean, we're not voting Flavor Flavin or L.J. Simpson. We're not stupid. I mean, we know this man's about to run the country. So you tell me if Flavor Flav was the uh, presidential candidate, you would not vote for him? <laughs> not happening. No? Not happening. What about Todd Bridges? Uh, no. No. <laughs> What would that do for us? I mean, you know, we're far enough what about, down on the scale. What about Gary Coleman? No way. No way. He's just very intelligent. He, he can drive his own motorcade, Gary okay, Coleman. Okay, well, he can drive it on out of uh, the U.S. as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> but he's a smart he's a smart man, and I think he has, you know, the right ideals and heart to be president. Sarah Palin is not doing it for anybody. Now, do you, do you have white folks coming up to you and asking you this question? No, actually. I'm, I'm surprised, but no, I don't. I mean, that would be like me asking every every four years that I vote, asking a white person, you know, what they felt about Bush or Clinton. I mean, it's just it's ridiculous, but I, I understand. But it's more about the candidate. Well, you know what the question really is? They're not just saying, what do you think Barack Obama? What they're really saying is, you know, there's never been a black guy before. What do you think about that? A smart black guy at that. I mean, <laughs> I don't think I don't think Are I you dissing Al Sharpton again? <laughs> Give him my number. I'll talk to him. But, uh, <laughs> no, it's, it's not going down like that. He's just a good guy. You can't have a president wearing a jumpsuit anyway. No, uh -uh, or that uh, played out perm he's got. No, we need some. <laughs> Not happening, but we're very, we're very excited. I hope everybody's excited about Barack. I, I, we're just so tired of waiting for Bush to get out. We just want this over with. Yes. <laughs> get that black guy in. The black, get the black guy. <laughs> you know how much we hate Bush? We'll even vote for a black guy. <laughs> Change of scenery. Anything. <laughs> But not flavor play. I think a Jew could win this year, for God's sake. <laughs> and you know what, Tom? So many of us thought that this would never, ever, ever happen. I really thought that a woman would be president before a black guy. But uh, I guess the choice is not. By the way, that that, that's another thing. How much? How much do people hate women in office? They would even vote for the black guy. <laughs> A woman? Oh, come on. Hillary Clinton, are you kidding me? Get, give us the black guy. <laughs> you know, for a while, Bill Clinton was our black guy. but uh, uh, He was the blackest president ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now we got one with color. So. <laughs> right up top of that fat white chick in the Oval Office. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Well, Tom, it's been great talking to you. I'm actually a new listener, but I definitely enjoy your show. I'm, I'm glad I got to call in on this one because I was cracking up when I heard that girl. <laughs> Thank you, Alenia. Thank you. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's go to Dante. Hey, Dante, you're black. What do you think of Barack Obama? I think I'm going to vote for him just because he's black, Tom. <laughs> Everyone's calling saying they're going to vote for him because he's intelligent. We've had 40 years of voting for white guys. Let's vote for the first black guy. You might not see it again. <laughs> so you you would vote for Flavor Flav if he was the candidate? No, I, I wouldn't go that far to vote for Flavor Flav. Maybe uh, a Will Smith or Denzel Washington. You know, they have to be able to go between and, you know, go to the hood and then go to Beverly Hills. So I don't think Flavor Flav would fit in very good in, in, in Beverly Hills. So. <laughs> Can you imagine that fundraising event? Well, I can tell you this. It would be a lot of eye candy at the White House if Flavor Flav was on there. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you, Dante. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate the call. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Let's go to Will. Hey, Will, you're black. What do you think of Barack Obama? Obama is the choice for the new generation. I thought that was Pepsi. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I mean you have to be a, you have to be a fool or an idiot not to vote for him. I mean McCain, Palin. This is surreal. This is like some weird Comedy Central. <laughs> no, it, 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 it's bizarre. It's very bizarre. Uh, but I I am voting for him because he's black for one main reason. I believe young black men they need better role models than the minstrels they see on VH1 or Messy Jesse or Big Perm Al Sharpton. <laughs> uh, seriously, I mean, you know, young black men need to see, hey, you know, we could aim high, you know, shoot for the stars, and, you know, that's what I believe. Yeah. Um, I mean, but any you know, of the role models with that we have now, no. This is not funny. I, I, I can't get with it. This is all bizarre to me, the whole thing, the whole Palin and McCain and, you know, Bush. He needs to get out. Yeah. But yeah, in eighty. I mean, you, you know, you're gonna vote for Big Bush. I mean, come on now. <laughs> Four more years of the same thing. Yeah, I know. I know. This is a guy who said <laughs> two weeks ago the economy is fundamentally strong. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, eight hundred points strong. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? If you got seven houses, it can go down eighteen hundred points. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Definitely. And, and about your question, I, I was at the, I was at the Ralph. And I, yeah, I do get white people approaching me about Obama. Like this lady, she had to be eighty years old, and there was a picture of Obama, like on People magazine or something. And she was point she was pointing to it. I could tell she wanted to strike up a conversation, but I kept my head straight, uh, looked away from her. I, I just didn't feel like it. And then she got the magazine and started flipping through it, and just kept looking up at me. And, <laughs> Eventually, she had to buy the magazine because it was the time to check out. <laughs> and left. She had no more time to read it for free. Oh, no. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I do get white people approaching me. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's all I have to say. Uh, you're the man, Tom. You're my hero. Thank you, Will. You're doing a great public service. Hey, hey, can you take me number nine? Take me out number nine style. Number with, nine style. With what? Snoop Dogg at the end. Oh, absolutely. Number nine. The remorse I feel will always be with me. From those to whom much is given, much is expected. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Biatch. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Yeah, I received a phone call from a Caucasian listener. I think her heart was in the right place, but in case you're wondering why I'm asking this question, this is what she said. You know, every time I see a black guy, like, just going to work or on an elevator, I want to ask him, hey, what do you think of Obama? You know, but is that racist or is that... You well, know, why, thinking, is why that would you ask, him? Why, hey, you're black, what do you think of Barack Obama? <laughs> yeah, it's kind yeah of, that's what I want to ask. That's what you want to ask. Let's go to Bo Monica. Monica on the Tom Langus show. Monica, you're black. What do you think of Barack Obama? Um, I think it's really sad, you know, in the workplace where you have to hear uh, questions. In my department, I'm the only African American. I have to hear this question constantly of, uh, you know, uh, well, do you think America is ready for a black president? I just turn around and look at him like he's <laughs> stupid. You know, what kind of question is that? I mean, first of all, he's a man first. He is a man. He's a man who happens to be black. I mean, well, how come we can't look at, uh, you know, it, the, the man is intelligent. You know, I mean, can't we look at the, 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 the type of quality? I mean, I get so tired of that question. Is America ready for a black person? Would you know, I mean, they turn around and just look at me. They don't ask that of any of the, the uh, other Caucasian co-workers. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like, in my answer, I feel like turning around saying, Oh, well, do you want to vote for another Caucasian ignorant buffoon like we've dealt with them for the past eight years? <laughs> That's what I feel like saying. Would you rather do that? Why, why are you asking me that stupid question, you know? <laughs> why would they ask you that question? You know, if you want to ask people if America's ready for a black president, you should ask white people. The black people have been ready for a long time. Well, I mean, I you know what, Tom? I would vote for him if he was white based on his character. Based on the fact that I like him, let's pretend like his skin was just 
So it just, if he looked like you, I would still vote for him. because Who's whiter than me, for God's sake? No, you know what I mean. The same Caucasian skin. I would vote for him because well, I like black him. People, Not black people voted for Bill Clinton. He was still a good, he was still a good president. You can't say that. Zero tolerance policy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, not that I disagree with you, but uh, th that was not a word. That was a phrase about what Bill Clinton liked having done to him in the Oval Office by Monica Lewinsky. But we can't say that. Good comment. I liked it. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Just past half past the hour on the Tom Likas show. And we're asking the question that the Caucasian caller would love to ask black people. And it goes like this. Let's go to Ranu. Hey, Ranu, uh, you're black. What do you think of Barack Obama? How you doing, Tom? I listen to you every day. Thank you. Um, first of all, I'm tired of being called Afro-American black american i'm an american very good you know born here in california you know and um like the caller a couple of callers back he was like well the role models you know the role models start at the home you know what i'm saying so yeah. you know i got a lot of white friends i work in a good old boy atmosphere I, you know i'm in uh, the oil industry you know and i talk to my boss he's a caucasian and we talk about it and you know i tell him straight up you know I don't want Obama to win for the simple fact I don't want him to get shot, and we have another Rodney King type thing going on. If you know guys went crazy over Rodney King, what they going to do if this guy gets assassinated? At least Sarah Palin wouldn't become the president. <laughs> You're right about that, man. But you know, I just want I just want an American, you know, drop this race thing. It's 2008, you know, you know that let's, let's move on, you know, let's you know let's drop this color thing and be America to be strong as a people, you know. That's all I want. All right. Sounds good to me, Ranu. Thank you for the call. Roger. Appreciate it. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Hey, Eric, you're black. What do you think of Barack Obama? I think he's a great person. He's very admirable. I mean, people will talk about he's not really down to earth and all that crap. They say that about Sarah Palin. But Barack Obama came from poverty all the way up to Harvard. Harvard. I mean, how many people do that? I want the guy to win because he's an intelligent person. He's the smartest person who ran for president this year. There's no other candidate as smart as him. Uh, especially the last uh, 12 years, for God's sake. Oh, yeah. I mean, even Bill Clinton, like, even though I like him, he's not the smartest guy in the book, but he came from rags to riches, too. Obama came from nothing, came all the way up to the top of politics. He's a great person to be president. We need somebody who's smart to solve all the economic problems. I mean, we don't need an idiot in there. We already had that for eight years. That's, that's not right. going to work. That's right. I, I That's why I'm voting for Obama, I'll tell you that. Oh, yeah. And then, like, the race thing, like, if he had gone and said, like, his name was Barry Obama or Barry, uh, I forgot his real last name, people probably wouldn't be even doing a little whole he's a Muslim thing either. Well, oh, Obama's his real his, Obama's his real last name, but years yeah, ago people his, called him Barry. Yeah, he was called Barry in college, but he could have taken his mom's last name. But I think it showed strength on his part to keep his, you know, his given name, you know, to face all those little hurdles that he faced because of that little blind racist. Yeah, I mean, my God, I bet he's been inspected at the airport more than anybody. Oh, oh yeah, you, you know it. <laughs> if your middle name is Hussein, you just step over here to the side, sir. We, uh, yeah. We're going to take out the wand right now. Mm -hmm. You know how that is. Oh, uh, yeah. Now, yeah, Eric, Eric, do you have white people coming up to you and saying, hey, what do you think about Barack Obama? I definitely do. Like, it happened a lot more in the primaries. And, like, you know, I answered the question, like, still borderline offended, but not really because I understand where they're coming from. But at the same time, it's a dumb question to begin with because it's a guy everybody knows he's smart. Everybody knows he's a pretty cool person. What am I going to say? Oh, this guy's an idiot. I don't like him because he's black. But no, I, it's a black. Just because he's black doesn't matter. He's a great person. He's very smart, intelligent, well spoken, all that other crap. I mean, I expect white people to ask me that because they, they're always fascinated by black people. They're fascinated by, oh, you can have your hair grown into an afro. What is that about? What is this? <laughs> 
<laughs> Eric, thank you very much for the call. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Women are the biggest snakes there are. So you might as well get what you can and get rid of them before you get bit. It's the Tom Likas Show. <laughs> From Hollywood, my name is Tom Likas, and um, I received the following call. You know, every time I see a black guy, like, just going to work or on an elevator, I want to ask him, hey, what do you think of Obama? You know, but is that racist or is that... You well, know, why, thinking, why would you thing? ask, why, hey, you're black, what do you think of Barack Obama? <laughs> yeah, it's kind yeah of, that's what I want to ask. That's what you want to ask. And you know me, I jump right in with both feet. She can't do it, but I can. So if you're black, we'll talk to you at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Hey, Rick, you're black. What do you think of Barack Obama? Well, like I said, uh, he's young, idealistic, and I think a lot of people are just scared of change. But can he really do a worse job than uh, GW right now? You know, I mean... uh He's young. Like if it was up to me, I would fire all the knuckleheads at all in Washington and get a new batch of knuckleheads. You know, that's the bottom line. Because I mean, he said, I'm, "I'm mad at uh, Bush because he sent me over to Iraq." You know, didn't find nothing. We found uh, Saddam in six months. We can't get Bin Laden in 15 years. What's wrong with that picture? I don't think it's been 15 years, but it's been a long time. Yes. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, that's our telephone number. Hey, Dennis, you're black. What do you think of Barack Obama? Hey, Tom, it's such an honor to meet you. I, I listen to your show all the time. Thank you. And, uh, I, well, personally, um, you know, a Rob, Barack Obama pops up out of nowhere, and, you know, all of a sudden he's the king of politics. And, I mean, nobody's ever heard of him, and all of a sudden all of the black people are uh, behind him. So I want to say to all the black people in L.A., hello, welcome, uh, friends and mostly enemies. Also, um... I have no idea what this major support is about. I mean, um, I mean, I don't see any track record that he has that says that he's just this hell of a politician. So you're I mean, not, you're opposed to him, huh? So you're opposed to Barack Obama? I'm not saying that I oppose Tom. I'm just saying that I don't fully trust him. Oh, well, with the elections coming up in 34 days, you're going to have to make up your mind by then. I know. I, yeah, I, I, I'm going I'm to do my best, Tom. But you know. Um, you know, I, he's talking well, but you know what? Talk is cheap, Tom. So, what are you voting for, McCain? Uh, no, no. I, I you know, I, I would if I had to choose. You know, I would have, you know, voted for. You do have to choose in, a, in about a month. I know, but actually, I, I would have picked someone. Uh, actually, he, he he fell from the race because of the scandal. I would have chose him. Yeah, but since he's not running, who right. who are you going to vote for now? I would I, I I would have to say I would vote for uh, Barack Obama. Ah, all right, but, but he's, he's not your first choice. No, not at all. All right, thank you, Dennis. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Hey, Antoine, you're black. What do you think of Barack Obama? Hey, Tom, what's up, man? How much doing a radio show? I just want to tell you, I listen to you every day, man. I love everything you talk about. You make a lot of sense, man, and uh. About the Barack Obama thing, man, it just feels good. As a young black man, I'm 24 years old, and it just feels good to see someone the same same race as me, same color as me, you know, uh, going running for president, making me feel like maybe one day this country won't be so racist, and maybe one day, you know, we're, we're going past this race thing and moving ahead. And I just want to say on uh, behalf of all young black men from the West Coast to the East Coast, down south to Midwest, we love you, Barack. Can you take me out, Kobe style? I certainly can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, there I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. 1 800 5800 Tom, that's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Dominique on the Tom Like a Show. Hey, Dominique, you're black. What do you think of Barack Obama? <laughs> You're funny, Tom. I mean, you know, Barack is great. I mean, but he's a politician. I mean, I kind of see if he does get elected, he's going to be that president who's trapped in one of those uh, saw traps from the movie. It's like, yeah, he can get out. He's going to learn a, a lesson. But, I mean, there's not much he can do. The country's in the worst shape that it's ever been. So, 
yay for Barack, you know, um, if he wins. Yeah, but do you, do you think that he's going to be uh, kind of uh, working with one hand tied behind his back? Pretty much, pretty much. Just like, that's exactly what I think, Tom. So I hope he does win, but I'm not expecting much in these four years. Um, I think the change that's actually going to happen is, you know, how, you know, white people say uh, you guys, you black people need to get over it. They're really going to expect us to get over it now. So you got yourself a black president. Get over it already. Yep. That, that's what I think is really going to happen. But Tom, if I, if I possibly can't ask you to. What's up with you and Bill Maher? You guys are like twins like, out the same womb. <laughs> you guys should be like having parties together. You guys should be inviting me because every Friday night, man, I sit and watch his show like like I listen to your show every single day yeah. with a with a blunt and Hennessy, and I love it because I get to get smart for thirty minutes or half or an hour and uh, and just feel great about you know learning about something that I usually wouldn't uh, uh, look look into. But I yeah, we need to, we to, need to get Bill in here to talk about his movie. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's religious beliefs. You guys are one person. Yeah. When you guys are going to meet and say, Well, hey, we, oh, we've met. I, I was on his show when it was called Politically Incorrect. I was on it six times. Oh, really? See, that's even a shame because you need to be on HBO where there's no, uh, uh, you know. <laughs> right, where I can say all those words I bleep out. Yeah, exactly. That you kicked everybody else off for. <laughs> right. You curse, huh? I'm great. That, that exact, that's what you pay $15 a month for HBO so you can see people say the F word. Yeah, buddy. Tom, you are great. And uh, take me out the only way that you should be taken out. Which Kobe is Kobe old school. Kobe and old school. Here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Oh. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Yeah, sure. We got a call. From a listener, and the caller uh, was, uh, you know, very enthusiastic. I think her heart was in the right place. I just think if she did what she proposed to do, people might see her as racist. You know, every time I see a black guy, like, just going to work or on an elevator, I want to ask him, hey, what do you think of Obama? You know, but is that racist or is that... You well, know, why, thinking, why would you ask, thing? Why? hey, you're black, what do you think of Barack Obama? <laughs> yeah, it's kind yeah of, that's what I want to ask. That's what you want to ask. So we're doing that on her behalf here at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Jamal. Hey, Jamal, you're black. What do you think of Barack Obama? Well, first of all, I'm glad you're saying black and not African-American. The gentleman that was on a while ago that said he's tired of people calling him African-American and black American, he's an American. The thing is that people need to understand, first of all, Barack's father is an African, and his mother is Caucasian. So he's not the same as I am. That's been my parents been here for 400 years. They were slaves, but Obama, he's different. He went to Harvard and everything. He can't have the same feeling as black people in America. You know what I'm saying? He he don't understand a black man getting getting beat down in the street by the police. He can't fathom. He can't fathom that. And the thing is, black people they'll grasp from the anything. This is just a, a higher scale of Martin Luther King. They give you who they want, and they're giving us Barack Obama. Do I love him? Yes, I do. But this is just a setup for this man to be assassinated, or they're just trying to show the world, oh, we're trying to change. And after 400 years, I'm sorry, America will never change, and they're destined to fall. Only, kingdoms only last about 400 years. Oh, wait a minute. Didn't we have, like, primaries? Didn't people actually go out and vote for or against here? I mean... It's not some little group that uh, made Barack Obama the nominee, was it? It was uh, the, all the Democrats in America. True. And understand, I, I, I love Obama. I, you know, I love him. But just to see Obama as a president just because the color of her skin is idiotic. We need someone that's going to run the country, and the president does not run the country in the first place. Okay? Whether he's black or white, except if he's a crook like George Bush and, and uh, Cheney. Other than that, Barack is not going to have any power whatsoever. And if any black people think him being in office is going to change anything for us, they're being fooled once again. Am I for him? Yes. I love him. He's a great guy. He, he shows that black people are articulate and smart. But as far as running this country, I'm sorry. It's, it, it's a bad thing to come. And it could set off something very, very 
very bad. If he's assassinated, America will burn down. Hang on a second, Jamal. Hang on a second. Uh, let me get uh, uh, Bruce in here. Bruce, you're black. What do you want to say to Jamal? Jamal, you're half right in that his father is Kenyan, his mother is white. You got? I don't have a problem with that. He is not a Negro. And therein lies the, the difference. The legacy of the Negro goes back to the Middle Passage and comes forward. Now, 1865, the 13th Amendment freed us. The 14th Amendment made us citizens. And the 15th Amendment gave us the right to vote. Uh, Jesse Jackson, Jesse Jackson ran for president, garnered enough votes to have a vote for, uh, uh, be nominated for vice president, and instead America chose Geraldine Farrar. Why? Because America is not ready for a black man to sit in the White House. As such, him being an African, him, his, him being African American, he's exactly that. He's born here with an African father, and he's safe. Why is he safe? Because he does not know the true suffering. He married a Negro woman just to find out what it's all about to be black. He got involved in Chicago to find out what the suffering was about, but he has not lived it. Jesse, exactly. Jesse Jackson lived the suffering. Reverend Al Sharpton lived the suffering. Jesse, bless his heart, he wants a Nobel Peace Prize. He'll never get it. Exactly. He'll never get it. He, he, he's, a, he's a product of the, of the Civil Rights Movement, but he's a plagiarizer of Martin Luther King. Uh, Reverend Al, Reverend Al's got a, got a shaky background. So there has not, uh, other than Andrew Young, Andrew Young and another one who, uh, Julian Bond, who was too young to run for the presidency. Now, these two men are eminently qualified. Shirley Chisholm is another, who was Barbara Jordan, another. And America is saying to all black people, we're not ready for a black man to sit in the White House. We'll put a white woman in there first. All right, we're out of time for this hour. Jamal, Bruce, thank you for the calls. Great hour. We appreciate them. The Tom Likas Show.